Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to another uh, installment of Pastor's Point of View. As you know, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Andy Woods. I'm here with uh, Dr. Jim McGowan. And Brother Jim, we've been talking about the signs of the time, sort of doing a series, if you will, on this yeah, subject. Yeah, this is great. And, you know, the verse that we kind of use to orient everybody at the top of all these shows is Matthew 16. Uh, just for the sake of time, would you mind reading just verse 3 there? All right. This is Matthew 16. We're going to read verse 3. It says, uh, And in the morning there will be a storm today, for the sky is red and threatening. Do you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but, dis but cannot discern the signs of the time? And the reason I think this verse is important is because a lot of people think you're kind of a crazy person if you're looking for the signs of Christ's second coming, mm -hmm. when in actuality he rebuked the leadership yeah. of the first century Israel for not understanding the signs related to his first coming. Mm -hmm. And there's probably more signs for his second coming than his first coming. So wow. you're completely uh, within biblical parameters, you know, to look for signs of the times, as sure. long as it doesn't move into date setting and right. things of that nature. Right. Yeah. So we have our typical prophecy panorama chart. We have a coming seven-year tribulation period. And there's a rapture of the church that precedes the tribulation period. And so our mindset is there is no sign for the rapture, mm -hmm. but there are plenty of signs for the coming seven-year tribulation period. Yes. Seven-year tribulation period can't just happen. The stage has to be set properly. Yes. And we kind of look at it as a chessboard. You can't have a game of chess until the pieces are assembled. The board before that is taken out of the, the box, and mm -hmm. the players take their respective seats. And only when that happens can a chess game start. Well, that's how the end times scenario works yeah. relative to the seven-year tribulation period. Um, the stage, we believe, is being set right now for that time period. Mm -hmm. And since the rapture of the church precedes the tribulation period... Uh, the rapture must be coming even faster. And that's the real issue that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Got to set that stage. Absolutely. So, seven-year tribulation period coming because of the signs. If the rapture comes first, mm -hmm. then the rapture is coming even faster. Yes. And people should understand this. We're not afraid of revealing to you at the outset of each of these shows our end times model. Right. We are unashamedly here pre-tribulational, meaning we believe the rapture comes before the tribulation period. And the reason I emphasize that is, is there's a lot of people out there, Brother Jim, doing so-called prophecy updates, mm -hmm. but they won't disclose their rapture view. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them aren't pre-trib. Yeah. They hold to some other view, and you don't know that when you're watching their update until you get into a chat room with them and they make some offhand comment. So they're very clandestine about their rapture view. Hmm. And they won't come out and be honest about it because they don't want to drive away potential viewers. Sort of a bait and switch type yeah. of thing, isn't it? So folks, anybody out there you're watching doing <clears throat> prophecy updates, you need to point blank ask them, mm -hmm. what is your position on the rapture? Amen, yeah. And the timing of the rapture, not just the rapture. When is it going to occur relative mm -hmm. to the seven-year tribulation period? Because yeah. you have a right to know where people are coming from, from their different perspective. Right. And we're just going to be honest up front. We have a perspective. Uh, we've tried to defend that perspective in other shows, mm -hmm. but we're assuming that that is true. Right. So what are some signs of the times, Brother Jim, that we've looked at? We've looked at signs related to Israel, a lot of signs. Mm -hmm. We've looked at signs related to international politics, such as one world government and things yeah. of that nature. And I think the last time we were together, we looked at signs related to economics. You know, it's yeah. stunning how frequently the Bible mentions economic issues relative to the seven-year tribulation period. So now we're moving into a fourth major category. I'm not sure we're going to even get through all of it today. But we're, we're moving into what we would call technology. And certainly our world is advancing, is it not, in the area of technology. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the end time scenario can happen 
unless certain technological realities become just that, a reality on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. I think the Bible, as it describes the end time scenario, is presupposing or they're assuming a certain technological level. Mm -hmm. And we believe that we're living in the general time period, along with these other signs we've talked about, where mm -hmm. hum human history, humanity, has caught up to, finally, the technology that the Bible infers will exist yeah. in the last days. Yeah. So what are, we're looking today at what are some of those technological signs? And here we're looking at basically four areas. Number one, microchip technology. Number two, the capacity for massive data collection mm -hmm. on law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing to collect data on criminals. It's another thing to compile massive amounts of data on people that want to follow the law. Right. The Bible also infers, and I'll show you the exact verses, uh, a particular level of what today we would call satellite television. And there might even be something here also in biblical prophecy concerning uh, WMDs or weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the direction we're going in. <clears throat> and let's start off here with uh, microchip uh, technology. And even before we get to that, it's kind of difficult to understand what Satan wants to do until we understand that he is a created finite being. I'm doing a teaching right now on Satanology, mm -hmm. uh, talking now in our series on Sunday mornings, uh, Sunday school, about the fall of Satan, his first estate mm -hmm. and fall. And we believe Ezekiel 28 describes that. Right. And there's a couple of important mm -hmm. things that are said in Ezekiel 28, verse 13 and verse 15. Would you mind reading those verses to us? Sure thing. Ezekiel 28, uh, 13 and 15, coming from the New American Standard. 95 update, verse 13, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the lapis lazuli, the turquoise, and the emerald, and the gold, the workmanship of your settings and sockets, was in you on the day that you were created. They were prepared. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until righteousness was found in you. Now, if this is a description of the fall of Satan, which we believe it is, mm -hmm. it reveals some very important features of Satan. You'll notice in verse 13, we have underlined the word created. That's important. And also in verse 15, created. What mm -hmm. does that mean? It means Satan is a finite mm -hmm. being. Yes. And as such, he lacks the omnis. The omnis are attributes possessed only by God. Mm -hmm. God has to possess certain unique attributes or He's not God. That's right. And at least three of those would be omniscience, all-knowing, omnipotence, all-powerful, omnipresence, everywhere at once. Mm -hmm. And because Satan is created, we know he doesn't possess those omnis. Right. And this belief leads us away from dualism. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, a lot of folks today, we get our theology from the movie Rocky, hmm. where we've got Rocky and Apollo there, at least in Rocky 1 and 2. Yeah. Uh, now there's Rocky, like, what, 27 uh, or something? At least, I think. I saw one that looked like their grandkids were hmm. fighting in the ring or He's something. He's fighting a Martian now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, Rocky's now the aged coach, uh, <laughs> coaching uh, the one I saw recently on the plane because I had a 16-hour flight, and I had to watch something, so I watched Sorry. Rocky, whatever it was. <laughs> Actually, they changed it to Creed, the Creed, and he's oh, yes. now coaching the, the, the Creed. The son of Apollo. Right? Uh, yeah, the son of Apollo. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. so anyway, the plot thickens. But anyway, if you go to Rocky <laughs> 1 and 2, you've got Rocky and Apollo going into the ring. You don't know who's going to win because they're fairly evenly matched. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people look at the battle between God and Satan that way. You know, we're not right. sure who's going to win. They're evenly matched. Yeah. Folks are not evenly matched at all. <laughs> uh, God is infinite. Satan, by virtue of the fact that he's a finite being or a created being, is in fact finite. And mm -hmm. as a finite being, <clears throat> Satan has all, and not being omnipresent, 
he's always had a desire to have some kind of system in place where he can control everybody sure. simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And that's his move towards a numbering system that the Bible predicts will come. Mm -hmm. In fact, would you mind reading that biblical prediction to us in Revelation 13 and verses 16 through 18? Yes, sir. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. And he causes all, that's all, the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. Okay, famous biblical passage. Right. Uh, <clears throat> a one world, some kind of cashless uh, numbering system on the horizon, mm -hmm. and I've tried to explain why Satan always always wanted this. It relates to his finiteness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a numbering system you can see Satan implementing in world history. Um, I'm looking here at a picture of the Holocaust survivors, yeah. the Jews, yeah. and they, even into their old age, still had these numbers yes. inscribed on them. Uh, which, by the way, is one of the reasons we don't we realize that the Holocaust is not a hoax, mm -hmm. as one fellow out there in cyberspace is teaching, that the marks are fake. What an abomination for a Christian pastor to even mm. infer something like that. Mm -hmm. I wish he would go to Yad Vashem <clears throat> and visit the Holocaust Memorial in Israel where it's documented that the Holocaust happened. Yes. But this numbering system is something that Satan has tried to implement before. Here's the difference, though. This was regional. Mm -hmm. It wasn't global. Yeah. And one of the reasons it was never global is the technology has never existed to make it yeah, global. That's right. Well, guess what, Brother Jim? Technology has caught up with Here we are. what the Bible says would happen in the last days, and suddenly the technology is in place for this numbering system to be digitized mm -hmm. and to easily go all over the world. Yeah. Um, and so has technology actually caught up to this time period? Yes, it has. Here's a newspaper clip. Uh, Wisconsin company to implant microchips in employees dated uh, July the 24th, 2017. And notice what this uh, particular uh, newspaper clip says. All right. A Wisconsin company is about to become the first in the U.S., to offer microchip implants to its employees. Yes, you read that right. Microchip implants. It's the next thing that's inevitably going to happen, and we want to be a part of it, Three Square Market Chief Executive Officer Todd Westby said. The company designs software for break room markets that are commonly found in office complexes. Just as people are able to purchase items at the market using phones, Westby wants to do the same thing using a microchip implanted inside a person's hand. We'll come up, scan the item, he explained, while showing how the process will work at an actual break room market kiosk. We'll hit pay with a credit card, and, and it's asking to swipe my proximity payment now. I'll hold my hand up, just like my cell phone, and it'll pay for my product. So it goes into the hand. That's I mean, didn't we just read in <clears throat> Revelation 13, 16 through 18, the mark uh, mm -hmm. on his right hand yeah. or his forehead? And you could see how this would be popular. I mean, could you imagine not having to fumble around with your wallet or your credit cards or mm -hmm. cash or stand in line anymore? Yeah. And you could see how people with no knowledge of Bible prophecy, you know, would be drawn to a system like this. And my simple point is this, folks. The, the scenario that the Bible predicts is no longer speculation, it's no longer imagination, mm -hmm. but everything God said would happen is happening. Yeah. The stage is being set for the one world system that Satan one day will orchestrate. Now in Sweden, uh, we were in Europe a couple years ago, and they would give you these little things called oyster cards, mm -hmm. which kind of got you in and out of the, the, the various 
public transportation uh, availabilities there, uh, etc. And here is an article, again from 2017, fairly recently, about how Oyster cards are no longer needed because people are receiving biometric chips into their hands, which get them in and out of what the Oyster card used to mm -hmm. allow them to get in and out of. And would you mind reading that article to us or a snippet of it? Yeah, and, and I might just make a quick comment. You know, this is replacing what we're doing right now. We, you know, people can take their cell phone and mm -hmm. they can go up and pay with their cell phone. Right. Or they may have a watch that has the ability to go and scan the watch. It does that. Well, this is the next step. Yeah. This is getting rid of that. Yeah. Gone are the days when an e-ticket was seen as cutting edge. One Swedish rail company is offering passages, passengers rather, the option of using a biometric chip implanted into their hand in lieu of a paper train ticket. The tiny chip has the same technology as Oyster cards and contactless bank cards to enable conductors to scan passengers' hands. Around 2,000 Swedes have had the surgical implant to date most of them employed in the tech industry. So here we are. Now even these articles that I'm quoting here, they're sort of out of date because when we look at Revelation 13 verse 16 very carefully, there's a Greek preposition translated on. The Greek preposition is epi. Mm -hmm. And so Revelation 13 verse 16 actually says, He causes all the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free, and the slaves to be given a mark on, mm -hmm. not in, mm -hmm. on their right hand yeah. or on their forehead. And this has been sort of a, a head scratcher for prophecy watchers like ourselves because we thought, well, microchip technology goes in to the hand. And the Bible seems to be describing a scenario not in the hand, but on the hand. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting, Brother Jim, that if you just step back and give it enough time, eventually technology is going to catch up, That's right. catch up to That's right. what the Bible says. Now here's a much more uh, recent article. Uh, I believe this is 2019. The title of it is Mark of the Beast Technology is Not What You Think. And it's dealing with e-tattoos. Mm -hmm. which is the same kind of electronic idea, but it doesn't go in the skin, it goes on the skin. Yeah. So would you mind reading that article to us? Sure thing. A new candidate has arrived, and one that is garnering praise and attention worldwide as the next innovative breakthrough. More noticeably, hardly anyone is ever talking about its potential as the mark of Revelation 13. These devices are known as electronic tattoos. Made out of a flexible silicon and rubber, the tattoo is applied in a similar way as a temporary tattoo and is completely non-invasive and pain-free. People around the world, Christians included, are so focused on its application as a biomedical savior that can handle everything from giving you a weather report to monitoring and adjusting blood sugar levels and just about any other practical function for a modern world. The difference in these devices and the RFID microchip is that these devices are highly visible on the surface of the skin, and virtually any design can be used to cloak its very electronic look. One can easily imagine a design that somehow equates to the number of the beast being the required mark that all of mankind must accept at the hand of their new world leader. And I think folks instinctively know these things are, are happening. It's not like they're hidden. I mean, mm -hmm. these things are being promoted in companies and, uh, you know, convenience items and grocery stores, etc. So just do your own research on this. But our only point is, look, <laughs> technology is now advanced to the point to make the biblical scenario entirely credible. Oh, yeah. And it's sort of interesting, in order for people to be receiving marks on their skin, doesn't that sort of imply that a generation has to arise that would be open to receiving marks on their skin? Yes, I think so. And so, I say this gently because I don't want to condemn people that have done this. That's not my point, okay? My point is just to make an observation. Mm-hmm. And the observation is this. 
when you look at the younger people of today, the millennials and right. younger, I have never in my lifetime right. seen a generation of people <clears throat> more accommodating to receiving marks on their skin through tattoos than mm -hmm. the current younger generation. That's very true. I, I remember when I was coming of age, uh, I remember there were certain people in my high school, you know, that or junior high that received tattoos and marks and mm -hmm. things like that. And it was, it was always something that was always kind of interesting, but it was never normalized. Mm -hmm. um, the people that did that were sort of the outskirts of the school. Right. And it was sort of a practice by minorities, not racially, but numerically. The people mm -hmm. that did that were clearly mm -hmm. in the minority. And I think everything has changed on that. Oh, yeah. uh, as I look around at the youth today, uh, I see this practice of receiving tattoos as something normal. Have you watched a professional basketball game lately? Oh, my goodness. Some of those, that's all I'll say. Well, some of those guys are so tattooed, yeah. you don't even <clears> think <throat> they need a jersey. From head, from head to toe, that's uh, right. It, yeah. it, it's, uh, it's stunning. Yeah. Again, are we here to condemn people that have done this? No. It's just an observation that the Bible says there's, there's going to be mm -hmm. this mark mm -hmm. put on the whole world mm -hmm. in, as far as individuals are concerned. And that does that not presuppose there'd be a generation that yeah. would arise yeah. that would be open to the practice? Yeah. And so we're living no big in deal. this time. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. Whereas when I was growing up, and probably you're a little bit older than me, when you were growing up, it was a big deal. It would have been, yes. But now it's sort of normal. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you even have Christian youth mm -hmm. that put Bible verses and oh, yeah. things like this on their body. Yeah. I notice nobody puts uh, Leviticus you know, 19 or 21, which <laughs> condemn the practice for ancient Israel. Yes, that's <laughs> true. Nobody, nobody tattoos that on themselves. That's true. But That's they've true. got John three sixteen and other, <clears throat> other things. So, yeah. just an observation. Am I overstepping uh, my no, bounds? No, I, I really think it's a great point because it's not. Again, we're not addressing the issue of the rightness or wrongness yes. of it. We're not condemning anybody for do, for getting tattoos. But what we're saying is, it's a stage setting yes. event where what you do is you 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 take away the sense of of prohibition from yes. something. You make it commonplace. And so then the next step is just move right in into the mark of the beast. Yeah, and it, it, it desensitizes <clears throat> people to a practice that used to be considered that's, taboo. That's right. That's exactly and, right. Uh, the generation between myself and the millennials is, you know, it's, believe it or not, it's not that far. We're talking about just a few decades, and here we are. Yeah. So, well, let's move on. To a, a second... Please, please don't write us and, and get upset with us and say that we're against tattoos. We're, we're not talking about the issue yeah. of tattoos per se. We're just saying this is a stage setting event. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, a second area of technology that's heavily, rapidly advancing is very much related to the microchip concept that we just talked about and the surveillance society concept that's coming. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I would call massive amounts of data collection on law-abiding citizens. Right. And, uh, gosh, what do we do all of the time? We email, we text, we post, we tweet, we give voice messages through different mediums, video messages, we put pictures up, on social media, Instagram. Mm -hmm. yeah. Question, where does all of that data go? I mean, is it just like carbon dioxide that disappears into the atmosphere? It goes to that magical cloud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know if carbon dioxide disappears into the atmosphere, but you guys know what Sounded I'm, good, though. You guys know what I'm trying to, trying to get at. Um, the fact of the matter is every single time we do something like that, it's stored somewhere. It's going somewhere, that's right. And consequently, what is happening is a dossier, a electronic footprint, mm -hmm. a file is being created mm -hmm. on every single law-abiding citizen that engages in that practice. Now, I engage in that practice because I largely see it as a way to promote our ministry. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of viewers through Facebook and different things, and so I post things quite frequently, but every time you post something, you have to understand that that information doesn't just disappear. Right. It goes somewhere, it and goes it's away. electronically stored. And what's happening 
is as we speak, every time we do that, a database, a dossier, is being collected on every single law-abiding citizen. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike, I don't mean to be paranoid about this. I enjoy the technology just like anybody else mm -hmm. does. It brings a lot of benefit to our lives. But here's my question. What happens when that dossier falls into the wrong hands? The Bible says that day mm -hmm. is going to come. Mm -hmm where they're able to look at your life electronically and piecemeal whatever they want selectively to turn you into anything they want you to be. Mm -hmm. For example, if they want to call you a hater, mm -hmm. if they want to call you a racist, yeah. if they want to call you a bigot, the information can be piecemealed selectively mm -hmm. to misrepresent anybody's character mm -hmm. and to make them an enemy of the state. Yeah. And my point is the, uh, the technology is now in place for this type of thing to happen. Amen. So here's an interesting article I found. Uh, the title of it is Welcome to Utah. This is from 2014. Welcome to Utah, the N NSA's desert home for eavesdropping on America by Rory Carroll. And until you read this, you really don't even realize that this place exists and what's happening there. Yeah. So would you mind reading that snippet to us? Yeah, put your seatbelts on, folks. Here we go. Welcome to the Utah Data Center, a new home for the NSA's exponentially expanding information trove. The $1.7 billion facility, wow. two years in the making, will soon host supercomputers to store gargantuan quantities of data from emails, phone calls, Google searches, and other sources. Since January 2011, a reported 10,000 laborers have built four 25,000 square foot halls filled with servers and cables, plus an additional 900 square foot of space for technical support and administration. James Bamford, author of The Shadow Factory, said the public had yet to grasp the significance of Utah's data mining. It's basically a hard drive. It's also a cloud, a warehouse. It'll be storing not just text and audio, but pictures and video. There's a lackadaisical attitude to this. People pay no attention until it's too late. You know, it's kind of interesting when you do an experiment and you just kind of go out to a public place, the mall, the restaurant, the theater, wherever, and you just people watch. Isn't it interesting to just kind of look around and see what people are doing? And almost every public place you go, what are they doing? They're looking at their mm -hmm. cell phone. Sure. They're composing an email, they're composing a text, yeah. they're posting something. You know, you've got people sitting across the table from each other at a meal, and they're not looking at each other mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. They're all looking at these little screens. Right. And I, I just wonder how many of us think through where all this information is going. Well, mm -hmm. it's going somewhere. It's going by, to Utah. By virtue of the fact that it's electronic, it doesn't just disappear. I believe this place, I may have the city wrong, Buffendale, Utah, Bluffendale, Utah, something like that, but just do a Google search on that. In fact, you might not even want to do a Google search. <laughs> Use technology to figure it out. Yeah, because then they'll know you're searching. But the reality of the situation is this is all well-known <clears throat> information, and yet your average person, myself included many times, when I use all these wonderful gizmos that we have today, we don't even think through this. No. And it's not like writing a postcard, which goes into the mail, the person reads it, and then they throw it away. I mean, this is a, per this is a permanent electronic record. Yeah. So every time we use this social media stuff, we got to think that there's someone in the background watching everything we're doing. Mm -hmm. And to, to be completely honest, Brother Jim, I don't think that way most of the mm -hmm. time. Right. But that's the reality. And again, paranoia, maybe a little bit, because I read the Bible, and I know that one of these days, all of this data 
is setting the stage for a coming surveillance society mm -hmm. that we read about in Revelation 13, verses 16 through 18, mm -hmm. where the state will control everything and know everything about me from cradle to grave. Yeah. So it's no longer uh, trying to guess how this one world system is going to come into existence. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of looking at the technology that's already in place and yeah. saying, aha, why am I surprised? Mm -hmm. God said this day would arrive. That's right. And what did Jesus say in the upper room? Uh, I think in John 13, I want to say around verse 19. He says, I'm telling you this ahead of time mm -hmm. so that when it happens, you may know that I am He. Mm -hmm. And consequently, you may believe on yeah. me. Yeah. So these are all built-in proofs that God has given us that the Bible is, in fact, God's Word. Amen. Amen to that, yes. So let's Absolutely. move on. Do you have any comments on that, this data that's been collected? I will just make this quick comment that my wife has shared with me. My wife's a school teacher. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's happening now is in universities, when kids are trying to apply for a university uh, degree to get into school, what's happening is they're going and checking their social media. Wow. And in many, many instances, kids are being denied access to some of the better schools based upon the social media that they have. Wow. Think about that. So be careful what you put on there. Everything that goes into into the electronic space is there. Somebody's, somebody can find it. Yeah. So. And so is it really worth your 10 seconds of fame? Well, To have right. that permanent record that's right. on your... Be, be careful what you post. On your database. Yeah. All right. Well, if all is well... Um, Okay. Let's go ahead and move to a fourth area. And this uh, has to do with uh, satellite television. Uh, let's take a look at Mark 13 and verse 14. All right. Mark 13 and 14 says... But when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, let the reader understand, I like that, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Now this is interesting because it's a command by the Lord concerning what the Jews are to do mm -hmm. when they see the temple desecrated. Yes. Now as best I understand it, this desecration will be taking place inside the temple. Mm -hmm. So if it's taking place inside the temple, how can Jesus say to the Jews when you see this happening? Doesn't this seem to imply some sort of camera or surveillance device inside the temple so they can see what's sure. so they can see what's happening? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. So it's kind of interesting you look at a verse like this, and to my mind it sort of presupposes mm -hmm. uh, what we would call today satellite television or cameras. Yeah. And you say, well, my goodness, has society really caught up to this point in time? Of course it has. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, here's another example of satellite television. Notice, if you will, the book of Revelation chapter 11, and notice, if you will, verse 9. Now, this is when the two witnesses are killed. Mm -hmm. And it describes, really here, the whole world seeing this mm -hmm. happening in the city streets of Jerusalem. Now, you want me to just read verse 9? You can read verse 8, too, because that gives okay. you the location. Okay, Revelation 11, 8 through 10. We're going to read 8 and 9. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom in Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Verse 9, those from the peoples and tribes and nations and tongues, are, excuse me, let me try that again. Those from the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit, per, permit their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. So it's interesting, these two witnesses are killed. Mm -hmm. And it says here, from the peoples, mm -hmm. tribes, tongues, and nations. Yeah. Now when you look at those four nouns, everywhere they're used in the book of Revelation, 
like Revelation 17, verse 15, mm-hmm. it's speaking of the whole world, yeah. the whole Worldwide. planet. Mm-hmm. Now, this is obviously mm-hmm. taking place in the city streets of Jerusalem right. because this takes place where their Lord was crucified, which right. is obviously Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for 2,000 years, commentators have been scratching their heads, wondering how can the whole world see what's happening right. in the city streets of Jerusalem? Right. Well, we don't wonder that anymore, do we, in the no. 21st century? No. Why? Because this is just another example where technology... Mm-hmm has finally caught up to the time period that the Bible talks yeah. about. I mean, you don't need any imagination at all today to figure out how this is going to happen because we have cable, mm-hmm. satellite, yep. live streaming. Yep. In fact, I could take you to websites right now that will show you live what's happening in the temple area mm-hmm. uh, in Jerusalem. Sure thing. And so this is another example of a sign of the times yep. where technology is finally caught up to the time period the Bible talks about. Isn't it fascinating how, <laughs> you know, for for centuries people have have made fun of Christianity, <laughs> made fun of the Bible, all that those that those prop those prophecy nuts and all that kind of stuff. And you know, God gets the last laugh. Sure does. Because like you said, as we move forward in time and our technology advances, all of a sudden things that, that 25, 50, 75 years ago couldn't possibly have ever been imagined, it's here. Yes. It's fascinating. And I find, Brother Jim, that the person with egg on their face at the end of the day is the person that doesn't take God at His word. That's absolutely right. Because many people mocked and laughed at the idea, going back to the 1600s and earlier, of the prophecies that one day the nation of Israel is going to be restored. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you look over at the Promised Land, and it was just a desert expanse, no population there right. at all. right. And so the temptation was to just say, well, those weren't meant to be taken literally and to allegorize them. And isn't it interesting that people that took it literally and were scoffed at in their generation are vindicated? Absolutely. And that's what's happening with this technology. That's right. Uh, The Bible is not only presupposing a reborn Israel, it's presupposing a particular technological season, Right. which clearly we're seeing. In fact, another 2017 article entitled, Israel Installs Security Cameras as Jerusalem Tensions Build. It's, it's, almost like it's, it's almost like they woke up one day and read Revelation 11, verse 9, and says, hey, let's go hook up some cameras in the city of Jerusalem. Would you mind yep. reading that excerpt sure to thing. us? And this is from July 24, 2017. Yeah. This is fairly recent. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, reporting, CNN reporting. Uh, Israel has installed security cameras near the entrance to one of the holiest sites in Jerusalem as tensions between Israelis and Palestinians edge higher after a violent week. Israel installed security cameras near the entrance to the old city of Jerusalem holy site early Sunday morning. So therein go the cameras. There they are. uh, Setting the stage for Revelation 11 uh, and verse 9. And this is sort of related to the first two points we made concerning the electronics for data collection Mm -hmm. and the electronics for the microchip and e-tattoo transactions Mm -hmm. because all three of these pave the way for the surveillance society that a finite Satan is going to mastermind Mm -hmm. in the last days. Mm -hmm. He's got to have some kind of system in place that he can monitor everybody given his lack of omnipresence. And so just a couple of points on how this too is setting the stage for the surveillance society. Now let's keep this in mind, Brother Jim. The goal of all of these people is ultimately to control the masses. Yes. In fact, there's a saying that's helped me with this. And it goes as follows. The issue is never the issue. It's a communist saying. Yes. The issue is never the issue, but the revolution. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ultimate goal with all of these political issues that we see today, whether it be global warming, Mm -hmm. universal health care, cameras everywhere, the ultimate goal of Satan with all of these things is not so much these individual issues, but these individual issues become the pretext for bringing in greater and greater government control. 
Yeah. And sometimes the orchestrators of the coming New World Order are honest enough to admit this. Every once in a while. Yeah. So notice this quote here from <clears throat> Congressman John Dingell, I think formerly of Michigan. Um, he made this comment on March 2010 when Obamacare was coming into existence. Mm -hmm. And he has since passed on in 2015 and gone on to his rightful reward, I'll mm -hmm. put it that way. Mm -hmm. And he made this <clears throat> statement about how the true goal of Obamacare was never about health care. Mm -hmm. Yes, here's what he says, or here's what this article says here. Congressman John Dingell, an Obamacare advocate, unintentionally admitted as much during a live telephone interview concerning the imminent passage of universal health care legislation in America. Dingell made the following remark to Paul W. Smith on Smith's Monday morning radio show, Detroit WJR News Talk 760. And this was on March 22nd of 2010. Here's what he said. The harsh fact of the matter is when you're going to pass legislation that will cover 300 million American people in different ways, it takes a long time to do the necessary administrative steps that have to be taken to put the legislation together to control the people. And there's the key words. There it is. To control the to people. To control the people. In other words, Obamacare wasn't about health care. It was about putting the mechanism in place to control the masses. That's, that's exactly right. And what is our point? My, our point is God said this would come. Mm -hmm. It's called the one world system of the Antichrist. And our basic point today is that system could never be brought into place without the right technology in place. Right. right. And we are seeing that technology assemble itself today through microchip technology, mm -hmm. data mm -hmm. collection, and satellite television. In fact, how many times, Brother Jim, mm -hmm. if you stop and think about it, are we on camera every <laughs> single day? A lot. You're at a stoplight, you're on a camera. Uh, you go into a convenience store, you're on a camera. Mm -hmm. You go into the bank, you're on a camera. I mean, I'd be frightened to learn how many times I'm on camera every right. single day. In right. fact, as I drive around even our city, I see more and more cameras being mm -hmm. installed. True. And this is the pattern of Europe. And we have an article here uh, by <clears throat> Maxine, I guess you pronounce Frith. that, Frith. Mm -hmm. And the title of it is How Average Britain is Caught on Camera Three Times a Day. 300 times. 300 times a day, thank you. <laughs> Would you mind reading this, that one yeah. sentence? It just says here, In fact, in the United Kingdom, a person on average is caught on surveillance cameras 300 times per day. Wow. And I could see monitoring criminals, mm -hmm. but what's happening is the monitoring is taking place of law-abiding citizens mm -hmm. all of the time. Mm -hmm. And we believe this is a pretext for world government, and we believe the technology is in place to accomplish this mm -hmm. now. It wasn't in place 100 years ago to do this. This really comes back, if I can just very quickly, Please. this comes back to that issue we were talking about a minute ago about the mark of the beast, people being open to taking the mark of the beast. Well, this whole idea of cameras, you know, I remember when they first started implementing cameras in different places. It was no big deal, right? We, we accepted it. Now it's getting to the, to the point to where there are more and more and more and more. It's just getting us ready. It's another stage setting type thing. Absolutely. And here's a quote from Alan Franklin in an article, or an, an article that he wrote in a book called Big Brother is Watching. And he is a British journalist talking here about how many times he is on camera uh, in Europe on a daily basis. Would you mind reading that? Sure. And how mm -hmm. America is a little mm -hmm. bit behind the curve, but is rapidly catching up. All right. He writes the following. If you want to be a film star, come to Britain. We're all on camera. All you have to do is walk through any town or drive down any road, and you are watched, filmed, and monitored. When my wife Pat and I tour America, we feel neglected because the roadside cameras are no, longer, uh, are no longer ever present. Not yet. As the world moves toward a Big Brother society beyond the nightmares of author George Orwell, who predicted a world in which the state watched everyone in his 1948 classic novel, 1984, it's like we are inmates of a high-tech prison. 
Big Brother really is watching us in Europe. The rest of the world is not far behind. So the technology is in place for a surveillance society in Europe. Yeah. In yeah. fact, we have surveillance societies already exist in existence right now. Yeah. Yes, we do. In the great regimes of the world, communist regimes, centralized regimes. Here's an example from China mm -hmm. and another example from India. Do you mind reading what it says <clears throat> there about India sure. in an article from the New York Times from 2018? Yeah. India has collected biometric data on most of its 1.3 billion residents to be used in a nationwide identity system called Aadhaar, meaning foundation. Seeking to build an identification system of unprecedented scope, India is scanning the fingerprints, eyes, and faces of its 1.3 billion residents and connecting the data to everything from welfare benefits to mobile phones. Civil libertarians are horrified viewing the program called Aadhaar as Orwell's Big Brother brought to life. Technology has given governments around the world new tools to monitor their citizens. Critics fear that the government will gain unprecedented insight into the lives of all Indians. So how do you monitor and control 1.3 billion residents? Well, in prior days you couldn't. That's right. But now the technology yeah. is in place for the government of India to do this. Mm. And our point is if you can do this technologically with 1.3 billion people, why can't you do it globally with 7 billion people? Sure. So what's happening in India? Yeah is going to rapidly spread throughout the entire world and right. certainly accelerate as the Antichrist comes to power. Absolutely, yes. Now China, with its credit mm. score system, social credit score system, is essentially doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And here's another article uh, concerning, it's entitled, Big Brother, China's chilling dictatorship moves to introduce scorecards to control everyone by Megan Palin of www.news.com. Mm -hmm. And notice what it says here about China. Yeah, and keep in mind the numbers we're talking about now. We just said 1.3 billion with India. Now we're gonna talk about 1.4 billion oh with boy. China. Oh boy. So think about that, all right? Yeah. So China's chilling dictatorship is moving quickly to introduce social scorecards by which all citizens will be monitored 24 seven and ranked on their behavior. The Communist Party's plan is for every one of its 1.4 billion citizens to be at the whim of a dystopian social credit system, and it's on track to be fully operational by the year, you ready for this, 2020. Wow. Overall scores can go up and down in real time, dependent on the person's behavior. Keep listening, you keep hearing that over and over again. Mm -hmm. But they can also be affected by, pe by people they associate with. If your best friend or your dad says something negative about the government, you'll lose points too. Your dad? That's what it says. Wow. If people keep their promises, they can go anywhere in the world. If people break their promises, they won't be able to move an inch. Under the system, those deemed to be top citizens are rewarded bonus points. Everybody wants bonus points. Sure, right? yeah. sure. The benefits of being ranked on the higher end of the scale include waived deposits on hotels and rental cars, VIP treatment at airports, discounted loans, priority job applications, and fast-tracking to the most prestigious universities. Man, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. Jaywalking, late payments on bills or taxes, buying too much alcohol, or speaking out against the government, they sort of slipped that one in there, right? Yeah. Each costs citizens points. Other mooted punishable offenses include spending too long playing video games, wasting money on frivolous purchases, and posting on social media. Uh -oh. Penalties range from losing the right to travel by plane or train, social media account suspension, su suspensions, and being barred from government jobs. Chinese journalist Li Hu is one of millions who have already amassed a low social credit uh, rating. 
He is now banned from traveling by plane or fast train. His social media accounts with millions of followers have been suspended. He struggles to find work. Wow. So you don't recycle. You consume mm. the wrong food products. You even have a friend or a relative. I think they call this the one hop rule. Mm. A friend or relative that happens to say something politically correct on social media. Uh, you happen to jaywalk. You happen to engage in any type of behavior, buy the wrong kind of car, a gas guzzler. Uh -oh. You engage in any, any type, you own a firearm. Okay. You, you engage in any type of behavior that's contra to what the state deems appropriate, mm -hmm. and your life starts to shrink. Yep. Your kids can't get into the best schools. Mm -hmm. You can't get your passport privileges. You can't get in, in and out of the country. You can't get a loan. Mm. Um, how are they able to do, control the masses this way? Because the technology through all of the surveillance cameras is in operation. It's there. And they're doing this with 1.4 billion citizens. India is doing it with 1.3 billion citizens. What's to stop the Antichrist from doing it with 7 to 8 billion uh, in terms of the world's population? In fact, here's another article, again, very recent, <clears throat> explaining how much money China spends on, on surveilling its own citizen as opposed to defending its own borders <laughs> yes. from a foreign attack. This Look, is eye-opening. It is. Yeah. He says, for nearly a, de a decade, China has spent more on internal security than on its defense budget. Holy cow. Yeah. Put another way, the Communist Party spends more on monitoring its own people than on guarding against foreign threats. So the government financially in China is more interested in surveilling and controlling its own people than it is in protecting them. That's from an article entitled The Dark Side to China's Smart Cities. Everyone's being watched and that's from June 11th, 2019. Yeah. And all that's these last month. All these sources mm. we're drawing from are from reputable news sources. Mm -hmm. Fairly recent. That one fairly recent. Yeah. Um, yep. That one, what did you say, I, just I, last month? I, you know, yeah, just last month. And I had a note I, please, when I read this, please. if I could quickly share this. As I look at this, this just reminds me of the Berlin Wall. Mm. You remember when, the, you, you're younger than I am, you may not remember this, but I remember when the Berlin Wall became a real issue. And the first thing that happened when they started talking about putting the wall up was everybody wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. Everybody was leaving. Get, get to West Germany as fast as you could. And what did they start doing? They started shooting their own people. They yeah. started doing everything they could to keep people from fleeing. Yeah, this is the same kind of thing here. They're going to have so much information on you. They're they're guard. They're not guarding against foreign threats. They're making sure their people can't leave. Yeah, it's an electronic concentration it, camp. It, it is. That's exactly it. what it is. Yeah. yeah. Now, could you imagine if Hitler had this type of technology? He <sighs> didn't, and so he could only implement things so far. And look what he did, though. Look what he did. But he Imagine. only accomplished regionally what yeah. the Antichrist will easily be able to yes, accomplish globally, exactly. yes. given the technology that the human race has advanced to up wow. until this point. In fact, the Chinese <clears throat> government, guess where they're putting their cameras, Brother Jim? They're putting them into churches. No, they wouldn't do that. See, here at Sugarland Bible Church, we've got cameras in our church so we can get our message out to people. Right. But in China, they put their cameras in churches as installed by the state to monitor what is being said in the church. Mm -hmm. Would you read that article? It's, sure. Uh, the title of it is uh, China Installs Surveillance Cameras in Churches to Monitor Christians. Again, fairly recent uh, article, June 11th, 2019. Yeah. China's Orwellian-like network of surveillance cameras now includes churches. Most churches have government-mandated surveillance cameras that allow the communist government to monitor the congregation's every move. The cameras are part of a massive network of cameras across China that allow the government to monitor citizens. There are an estimated 176 million surveillance cameras across China. That number could reach 450 million by 2020. Wow. Revelation 13, verses 16 mm. through 18, to me, doesn't look like it's that far-fetched. No, not Given the technology of today, mm. which includes microchip technology, data collection technology, mm. and satellite television, 
humanity has finally caught up to the time period that the Bible predicts. Yeah. The tribulation period's coming. Amen. And the rapture can't be that far away. Let's mm. cover real fast one more piece of the technological puzzle, and this has to do with weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, would you mind reading here Isaiah 13 and verse 12? All right, Isaiah 13, 12 says, I will make mortal man scarcer than pure gold, and mankind than the gold of Ophir. The Bible predicts a time where the human race will, will go almost extinct. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus in the, the, excuse me, the Olivet Discourse said the exact same thing. Yes, he did. In Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22. For then there will be a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. If God doesn't, if God allowed the seven-year tribulation period to go beyond its allotted time frame, mm -hmm. the human race would go extinct. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting that when you look at the tribulation judgments, and you look at the fourth seal judgment, and the sixth trumpet judgment, if I'm interpreting these correctly, by the time you get to trumpet number six half of the world's population will be eradicated. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you mind reading Revelation 6, verses mm -hmm. 7 and 8? This is trumpet judgment number 4. Yes, Revelation 6, 7 and 8. When the Lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come, I looked and beheld an ashen horse. And he who sat on it had the name Death and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and with famine and with pestilence and by the wild beasts of the earth. So there it talks wow. about a quarter of the world's population being destroyed. Mm -hmm. But cheer up, folks, it gets worse. We get to the sixth trumpet. Would you mind reading Revelation 9, verse 15 and verse 18? And the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released so that they would kill a third of mankind. Verse 18. A third of mankind was killed by these three plagues, by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which proceeded out of their mouths. I mean, no wonder Jesus said, no, you know, if, oh. if those days had not been cut short, no mm. one would survive. Mm. And, you know, Charles Ryrie, I had a chance to hear him speak prior to his death, uh, he was a, a great intellect, but he could take complex ideas and put the cookies on the bottom shelf. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what made him great. Yeah. He had a very simple communication style. In fact, most people don't realize this, but the very first book Charles Ryrie wrote was a children's book. Mm -hmm. And he loved to take you know, make simple object lessons. And he was speaking at a church literally about three or four doors down from the house I was living in in Dallas. So I went to hear him speak, and he w described these judgments this way. He said, everybody, take your hand up, put your thumb down, and hold up four fingers. He says, now put your middle finger down, uh, excuse me, your little finger down. That's seal judgment number four. Mm -hmm. And then he said, take your, what is this, your uh, what, ring, ring finger, finger. Opposite <laughs> ring finger. Opposite ring finger, there we go. And put that down, and that's trumpet judgment number uh, six. Mm -hmm. And he said, how many fingers are left of the four? Two. Mm -hmm. And he says, that's what's going to happen to the world's population. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to this sixth trumpet, mm -hmm. half of the world's population will be destroyed. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's just a simple way of communicating the magnitude mm -hmm. We just of can't these imagine. judgments. We, we can't envision No, that. it's just mind-boggling. Mm. Now, here's the question, Brother mm. Jim. How is God going to do this? It's possible God can do it directly with no help from man at all. Sure. After all, God did a pretty good job on Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, He did. Before there was nuclear weapons. Yep. Would you mind reading Genesis 19? 24 and 25. Sure thing. Genesis 19, 24 and 25. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. 
And he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. So God is capable of bringing direct judgment. Yep. But part of me thinks that maybe, yes, he will use direct judgment, but maybe part of these judgments in the book of Revelation is God is allowing man to do what's in his heart mm -hmm. through the technology he's created. Mm -hmm. And how are or were most of the world's, if you go back through world history until modern times, how are most of the world's battles and conflicts and wars fought with what bows and arrows mm -hmm. spears maybe spears mm -hmm. you go back to the american revolution you've got muskets and cannons and cannonballs yeah. and the, no doubt lethal weapons mm -hmm. but incapable of mass destruction of the human race right and yet in our generation relatively speaking, what are we sitting on? We're sitting on all of these weapons that have the capacity to destroy the world's population, I would guess, several times over. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got chemical weapons. Mm -hmm. In my own lifetime, I, Saddam Hussein, when he was alive, mm -hmm. used those on his own people. Sure did. Mm -hmm. As did, I think, the recent leader of Syria did the same thing. Mm. Uh, you have atomic weapons, you know, we've seen, I've seen the pictures, you've seen the yeah. pictures of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. And then you add to that weapons that are even more lethal in terms of their power, Many nuclear weapons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are capable of creating, like no generation <clears throat> that's preceded us, the mushroom cloud. And we're capable through these weapons that we have of destroying the world's population several times over. Now, if I'm reading my Bible correctly, that's exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's just sort of interesting to me how technology has caught up with the capacity to wipe out the human race, yeah. which is basically what the Bible predicts, yeah. but for the grace of God yeah. in the last days. Yeah. So I just uh, kind of uh, surface this to communicate to people that here's a, yet another example, you know, where technology has caught up to the mm -hmm. end time scenario as predicted in the Bible. Absolutely. In fact, you have this very strange, I don't know how you interpret this, <clears throat> very strange prophecy in Zechariah 14 and verse 12. Would you mind reading that to us? Sure. Zechariah 14, 12. Now this will be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the peoples who have gone to war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet, and their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongue will rot in their mouth. So they're standing on their feet, but their eyes are rotting in this judgment. Their tongue is rotting uh, in this particular judgment. Mm -hmm. I'm no expert yeah. on radioactive poisoning and nuclear fallout, but to me it sure looks an awful lot like that. It sounds that way. Maybe God is going to do this directly. Maybe he's going to do it indirectly by letting man do what's in his heart based on the technology he's created. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting mm -hmm. that in these last days, humanity, we have become technological giants, mm -hmm. but simultaneously we are ethical midgets? That's, that's right. As our technology yeah. has increased, our mm -hmm. ethical understanding has decreased. I mean, we're aborting children now up until the point of birth, despite the fact that we're sitting on all this technology. And you kind of look at this and you wonder, well, how much longer is God going to allow these yeah. technological advances to occur before right. we completely destroy ourselves? Yeah. We're very proud of our technology, <laughs> aren't we? Very proud of how we've become very godlike. And in fact, this technology may be to our undoing. So Very folks, possible. kind of as we wrap up here by way of conclusion, we're looking at signs of the times. We've looked at signs in previously in our study related to Israel, international politics, economics. Here we're just focused on technology. And we've seen how technology has finally caught up to the mm -hmm. scenario the Bible indicates will exist in the last days via microchip technology, data collection, satellite television, weapons of mass destruction. I mean, the one world surveillance society that Satan wants to bring in presupposes certain technological yeah. advances. Yeah. 
I mean, Hitler couldn't have brought this in right. with the limited technology he had. But you can see how we've caught up to what the Bible predicts. And then also there's the potentiality of weapons of mass destruction being used mm -hmm. in the last days. Um, you wonder how many more signs the Lord could give us that we're approaching that hour. Time to wake up. Time to wake up and smell the coffee, which is mm. our point of application. So I don't know, Brother Jim, what do you have to add? Where, where are we going wrong with this? Uh, well, the thing I would just add is, you know, as we go all, over all these things, in, in one sense it seems very depressing, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness, how can we be getting to this place where all these terrible things are going to happen? But, but there's hope. Yes. You know, we, the, you have to read the rest of the story. You have to get to the end, right? Right. And that is is that we know that Jesus is coming back. Right. And we know that uh, he wants people to, uh, to believe in him for salvation. And then they'll be they they will escape many of the things that we're talking about here. Yeah, uh, you know. So don't lose heart. Come to Jesus. Yes, is really the answer. And they could do that right now. And it's so simple. By put, go ahead. And you finish. just you just put your faith, trust, and hope, and confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ for the eternal safekeeping of your soul. That's it. It really doesn't get any harder than that. Uh, you know, Jesus said these things. Uh, John said, these things have been written that we might believe, and by believing we would have eternal life. Amen. So uh, it's not about what you do, it's about what Christ has done. Yeah. And He's done it all. Yeah. And he, he did it so well, He said it's finished. Right. What a wonderful thing. And uh, I like what you said there, in addition to the gospel you presented, is we're trying to teach people how to interpret the news and items in the news mm -hmm. through the lens of the Bible. Absolutely. Because if you don't have the Bible, you don't have the right lens for understanding these things. That's right. And you you start to think that you start to move into hopelessness and depression. That's right. But when you look at these things through the lens of the Bible, you learn that God hasn't lost control of anything. That's right. And human history is being orchestrated to a preordained conclusion. That's right. God's yes. in control of everything. Yes. And that gives us hope in a Amen. hopeless world. Amen. And so that's part of the benefits of looking at the signs of the times. Um, we did run into a few comments and questions online. We apologize. We had all kinds of problems with our own technology, <laughs> with the live stream and so forth. But fortunately, I think we're recording this on uh, YouTube. And so we're going to have this posted on YouTube. So if you miss this, don't panic because the YouTube copy will be available. Yeah. I, I see people in the back there shaking their heads like this, so <laughs> I'm assuming that's in the affirmative. Otherwise, Jim and I had a great time. We had a blast today, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I feel very edified. One person writes in and says, please know that we truly appreciate these helpful teachings and pray for you both regularly. Thank you. Yes. Another person writes in and says, that's always been my main reason for not tattooing. Causing people to stumble. When you know what's coming, why help the cause? Good point. Another person says, dossiers are being collected on us even now while we watch and tell you, right, tell, tell you how right you are regarding current events as well as the scriptures. Well, you're probably right on that, but uh, you're also fulfilling a divine mandate to be edifying and comforting to fellow believers so thank Amen. you thank you for doing that that's right um we're going to sign off just a couple of announcements um you can follow us here at sugarland bible church we're going to be starting up our kingdom series again yes first sunday that's and wednesday exciting. we're teaching uh angelology now getting into satanology and demonology sunday mornings from 9.45 to 10.45 uh, a.m. Central Standard Time. Mm -hmm. uh, you can track us uh, through our live feed on our Facebook page, www.slbc.org. And we're teaching the book of Revelation from about 11.30 to 12.30 Sunday mornings. So you can live stream that. All of that is archived as well right. on our uh, website and also our Facebook page. If you're interested in seminary training, uh, I encourage you to take a look at the fall enrollment has just uh, begun. So take a look at uh, Chafer Theological Seminary. Mm -hmm. uh, we really specialize in technology, believe it or not. 
proper or, use of technology. Proper use of it where we teach from anywhere to anywhere. Yeah. That's how our classes are designed. Yeah. Go to www.chafer.edu. We'll teach you how to exegete the Bible from its original languages Amen. with the proper theology and method of interpretation. Um, I would encourage you all to sign up for our YouTube channel. Just go to Andy Woods and type in Pastor's Point of View into your YouTube search engine. I would encourage you to subscribe. Um, we're approaching 16,000 subscribers. Wow. So thank you for pushing our numbers up. Wow. For those of you that have been subscribed for a while, we know that YouTube involved, gets involved sometimes in changing your subscription without you knowing it. So make sure your subscription is up to date. You can click the bell to receive uh, an immediate notification of anything we put on our uh, YouTube uh, channel. And also, um, if you're interested in a Bible Lands cruise in 2020, my wife are, and myself are co-hosting a trip along with Bill and Susie Perkins of Compass Ministries of Bible Lands, going to the Ephesus, Greece, places like that that Paul wow. went to, spending three days in Jerusalem. That's going to be October 6th through the 21st. 2020 and go to www.compass.org to find out about that and uh, if you're interested in signing up for that we'd appreciate the referral there should be a drop down menu when you sign up and you just want to mark the section in that drop down menu that says sugarland all one word mm -hmm. uh, misspelled mm -hmm. unfortunately because sugarland is two words Correct. And that'll give uh, the, the organizers some information concerning the fact that uh, we were your referral. And I don't know, as far as commercials go, Brother Jim, infomercials go, I don't have anything else, do you? No, not at all. All right. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to conclude with there? I'll just say this, God is good all the time. Amen. And so we're going to sign off now. <laughs> pray for us as we pray for you, and we'll see you next time. God, God bless, bless you. Bye-bye.